Hi everybody, Julian here. In this video, we're going to continue exploring the recently launched RCAI Trinity Mini model. And to do that, we're going to vibe code a simple chatbot. And I'm going to use Python, Gradio, the OpenAI API. We're going to invoke the model hosted on OpenRouter. And of course, I'm going to use my favorite tools, cursor and cloud code. Okay, let's get started. I discussed uh, Trinity Mini in detail last time, so uh, I'm not going to do that again. I'll just include all the links in the video description. Okay, so elevator pitch, 26 billion parameter model, mixture of experts, uh, reasoning capabilities, um, and we'll see those in action. Okay, uh, the model is available on Hugging Face under an Apache 2.0 license, which means you can use it uh, even for commercial apps. And uh, and that's what we're going to use today. It's also available on Open Router uh, with uh, a friendly OpenAI compatible API. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Let's fire up Cursor. Okay. So there isn't much here, just uh, an environment and uh, a .om file with the uh, Open Router API key. Okay. Which is the uh, usual way to do that um, instead of hard coding it into your code. Uh, but then again, I'm showing it on screen, which is not what you should do. Uh, and uh, obviously, I will uh, I will disable that key uh, when I'm done. Okay. So let's just uh, let's just prompt the model. I'm going to use plan mode for now, and just let them. Yeah, just let cursor pick, pick the right model. So here's my prompt. I want to build a simple chatbot based on the RCI Trinity Mini model. You should use Gradio, the OpenAI client and streaming mode. I also want to see the reasoning code, add some sample prompts, and then I give it the uh, the model page on open router and point it at the API key. Okay. Let's try this. We'll look at the plan first and if we like the plan, then uh, we'll switch to, uh, to building. Ah, there's a question. How would you like to display the reasoning code in a separate panel tab below? in line or as a collapsible section. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, okay, show me the reasoning code at top, then the answer below. Use different panels. That's why I like to, to ask the models you know, ask me for clarification instead of just, you know, picking one of the options and then me realizing, ah, oh, okay, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so it looks like we have our plan. Let's take a look at the plan. Okay, create chatbot, Gradio, OpenAI, streaming handler, implement reasoning extraction, add Simple prompt. Okay. The layout. Okay. Panels are stacked vertically. Simple prompts. Okay. Well, that looks it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Let's go build. So that's probably going to take a minute. So I'll pause the video and if there's anything fascinating. I'll show you. Here's the code already. Okay. So we've made good progress. We have the basic structure. We have history management, which is nice because I didn't ask about that. So I should be able to ask follow up questions. Uh, we have the, the streaming code. We have sample prompts and then we have the app and the radio interface being built. All right, that should be done soon. Okay, so now we have extraction for the reasoning code, which is important. And yeah, that should be the last thing. It's fixing something somehow, which is fine. I don't have to fix it. 
let's give it a minute. Okay, so now we have the code. One thing I think we're missing is the requirements file. So let's ask for that. I didn't specify. Okay, done. So let's just keep all those updates and let's just run the chatbot. Okay, there's a small error. Fine. Yeah, let's ask it to review the code for Gradio 6 uh, compatibility because that's the one it installed by default. I didn't specify any version here. So, um, yeah. If there are some additional keywords or inconsistencies, um, let's uh, let's double check that. We should save on debug. Okay, so apparently it did fix a few things. So let's keep all of those and run. Okay, let's try and run it. I don't like the built-in browser so much. Okay, good, good, good. Reasoning code, chat. Okay, examples. Let's give it a shot. Ooh, yes. Man, this is fast. In the previous video, I showed you how fast this was. It was like two, 250 tokens per second. Um, and we get that here. Okay, so we see the reasoning code. And that's nice. And then we see, we see the answer. With a bit of math and everything I like here, a bit of code. Good. Um, nice, nice. Why don't we try another one? What are the key differences between supervised and unsupervised learning? Let's go. Wow. Isn't that cool? Seriously. That's the beauty of those um, mixture of experts models. So it's 26 B, 26 billion parameters, but it's only 3 billion active. Meaning when you run inference, uh, you're only using, uh, you're only computing, so to speak, with 3 billion parameters. So that's why you get that kind of speed. Literally, you get the speed of a 3B model um, with the knowledge of a 26B model. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's super nice. Uh, one thing I'd love to have here is maybe the ability to set the number of tokens. So why don't we go back to cursor and, uh, and ask for that? Okay, um, so why about... Let's try this. Add a slider to control the number of generated tokens. Okay, yeah, we can build that directly. It shouldn't be a big, uh, should be a big thing. It's just one more widget in the UI. So what did it change here? Okay. It's passing a max tokens to the chat function. And what's this bit? Okay. Yeah. It's passing the same to the, the completion API at open router. It's adding the slider. Max 2K. Yeah, let's make that 4K maybe. And yeah, then it's passing it again. Okay, well, that looks good. Let's run that again. Reload it. Ah, here's my slider. Okay, well, let's ask 4K. And let's try, you know, let's try this one again, why not? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, you could keep playing with this, right? It's so easy. Uh, maybe one last thing I want to show you. And I, one thing I tend to do, let's shut this guy down for a second, is uh, run a code review with a different model. And uh, we could use uh, Claude here. Um, and, you know, there's an extension for um, for Claude, uh, code in, uh, in Cursor. So you get the best of both worlds. You get all the you get all the cool models here, right? And you get to use your uh, your CLI. So let's check which one we have here. Let's use Opus. Um, okay, do code review. Okay, list issues. Don't fix them. Oops, don't fix them for now. And trust me, it will always, always find something. It's pretty crazy. No error handling for missing API key. Okay, that's problem no arranging for api calls oh that's bad um global client initialization okay hard-coded magic numbers for tag parsing oh that's that's ugly yeah redundant variable all right oh there's a lot of stuff wrong about this thing critical issues logic issues Ah, doc strings. Oh my god. 15 issues. Ah, there you go, vibe coding. Um okay, let's fix fix the critical issues. I I, I advise you to fix them, I would say one by one or you know, uh not all at once. Uh if you ask it to fix like 15, yeah, it's gonna rewrite uh it's gonna rewrite everything and it's gonna break a lot of things. Um And I like to tell it, um, apply the smallest possible change. Okay, ask me, not sure. All right. Okay. So if AIP, API key is missing, just yell at the user. Yes, I like that one. I don't think it's going to break anything, right? Because that's the thing. Code reviews, automated code reviews, you know, they have this tendency to just rewrite everything. And, you know, they can just uh, kill, kill everything you've done so far. So what is it doing here? Oh, it's going to add a try accept block around the API call, which isn't changed. Yeah, OK, I like this one too. OK, great. Um, so that's a good start. Um, and we could keep going, right? We could list. The remaining issues. Um, one thing I like to do is uh, for a real project, not a toy demo like this, is to ask it to create um, Git uh, GitHub issues automatically. I have a bunch of agents. Which live in a terminal, which is way too tiny to see. Oh, there you go. So I have a GitHub issue creator, I have a GitHub issue resolver, et cetera, et cetera. And those are really nice because you can uh, you can use the GitHub CLI to get things done and focus the agent on a particular thing. Um, and, um, and that's really nice instead of using everything in the same conversation, right? So that's pretty cool. So uh, should we try the chatbot again just, just to 
<laughs> See, we haven't broken anything. I'd be surprised, but you never know. Okay, it's still working. Okay, let's try one of them again. Just bump this. Submit. All right, and off it goes. Perfect. Perfect. So, as you can see, um, you know, you got to use the right tool for the job. And, um, and the, the coding assistants are absolutely amazing. Uh, I love the combination of um, the, the built-in models and cursor and, uh, and Claude as well. Uh, you know, do the, uh, you know, the, do the building uh, first, uh, check out the code, run it, you know, get it to uh, a decent place, and then uh, use uh, Claude code and maybe your sub-agents to, uh, to polish everything from security to uh, maybe the UI, maybe creating issues, etc., etc. And working with different models will, you know, cover more ground and, you know, hopefully find more issues, right? And, um, and when it comes to, um, to solving, you know, business problems, I think working with uh, a high quality model like this one is just mind blowing, right? The, the, the speed, and as you can see, is just amazing. And, um, and it's, uh, super easy to use, right? You can use the, uh, again, the OpenAI API from, from Open Router. It will look like exactly like any of the other models you're working with, um, except of course the, the, the speed and the cost uh, is very, very different. Here we're using the free version, but if we look at, uh, which has a, some kind of quota, I suppose, but if we look at the paid version, uh, you're only paying 15 cents per million output token, um, which is, uh, you know, I think, at least 10 times cheaper than uh, GPT-5 Mini, right? Which is already fairly cost-effective. Um, so if you're looking at the GPT-5s or the, the huge anthropic models, uh, you can probably, uh, yeah, probably divide your cost by, you know, 50, maybe 100 if you work with a model like this. And uh, again, it's a reasoning model. It's incredibly good. Uh, you'll see the benchmarks in the blog post. So um, yeah, I would recommend that you take a look. Uh, you could get uh, a lot of speed up, a lot of scalability, and uh, a lot of uh, savings, right? So what's not to like? Okay, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show you today. Uh, a little bit of vibe coding, a little bit of... Uh, AI assisted uh, software development uh, with uh, large models uh, to build a simple and fast and cost effective application with uh, a much smaller model. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and uh, I'll see you soon with more content. Until next time, you know what to do. Keep rocking.